Lord is good, amen. Happy Father's Day to you. Uh, in my time here today, I am going to, uh, to be talking about something that I think will benefit us all. And that is the, uh, the benefit package of God. You know, when you go to, into a job and you're you are expecting, um, you know, you, you want to hear, you maybe go into a new job and you sit down there and they tell you how much they're going to pay you and you, they're looking at you, you're looking at them, seeing if this is a good fit. And then before you're out of that situation, that, that conversation, whether it be online now or, or uh, face-to-face, you, uh, you, you want to eventually get to the benefit package. Yeah, okay, that's all good. I, I'm going to get that salary. I'm going to make that per hour. But I want to get to the benefit package. How many of you like the benefit package in life? Well, the Lord has his own benefit package for us. Aren't you glad God has a benefit package for you? And it, it, is, it goes far beyond what I'm going to speak on today. We talk about it most of the time. All the good things of God and the benefits that he has for our life and what he wants for us. And I want us to see this, this scripture. We're going to be in Psalm 103 today. But I want you to see it as we talk about the benefit package of God that comes with your salvation, when it comes with your belief system. Once you believe it and start walking in it, man, these things start be, becoming real to you. And I want you to see it on two, two uh, planes today. On what God is doing for us, and, and, with the, and also, also the concept that God gives us throughout the Bible, that we are supposed to be emulating Him. Somebody say amen. I want to be like Him. How about you? I want to be like Him. And I want to be like I, I want to be as much as I, I want to line up. I want to love like Him. I want to grace like Him. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? I want to learn from Him. And what His Word tells me, I can be more like that. And the Lord likes that. That's what He wants us to do. That's why He tells us the things in the Word of God, so we can be more like Him. Amen. So here we are. Happy Father's Day, by the way. Let's go. When I was reading this, it, it really... Uh, well, I love this passage anyways, but I don't think I've ever brought this to you in this way. And I want to just, on Father's Day today, I want as fathers, as, as leaders of your household, uh, as women, as you're, you're in your household, as you are, you are leading and doing, I want you to see these things as things that you can do in your house as you're raising children. You know, I, I'm, I, I'm proud of my, my dad. My, my dad is an, an awesome dad. Dad, you've been a great father. And you are a great, not just Ben, you still are a great father. And, and he always, he said, is my biggest fan. He, you know, he's always said that in my life. And I know that and I feel it. But what I, I, I want to say about him, what, what, what I really, what happened in his early life is he was, a, he was a preacher. He told you earlier, he was, you know, my great, my, I guess it was my great grandmother uh, was a preacher and, and my granddad is a preacher. My dad is a preacher. I'm a preacher. You know, we, we're, we're, we have a legacy and a lineage of preachers in our, in our world. But, but when, it, when it got down to, when, when it was given and the opportunity came to my father, he was a young man. And he was a young man in his early 20s. And, and he and my mom were married you know, way early. Were you, what, what, how old was mom when you married her? 17? 17 years old. My dad was, how old were you? 21. And they went directly into the ministry and, and they were preaching and they were under a, where, where the same uh, denomination his dad was in. And there was a, it was, it was an opportunity for him to get going. But he saw early in that denomination that that wasn't the core values that he saw in the word of God. So he took that opportunity to, to, uh, to say, well, you know what, he did. for some years he was there and just frustrated because he couldn't say, he couldn't, couldn't talk about how much the love of God and the grace of God was real for right here, right now. Somebody say amen. Yeah, so, they, so he took that. He took that and he said, well, I must say that. And he had a, a comfortable place. He could have risen up in that denomination and taken the whole thing over. They liked him like that. But they didn't like what he was saying. That he's, they were trying to shut him up in some of the grace words. And how many of you know, you can't shut up grace words out of when you are a grace man. Amen. And so he had to rise up and, and change and, and, and leave his job and leave that whole heritage of, of, of denominationalism and, and uh, that, that, that small, kind of that small thing where, where life really was all about getting out of here. And God, and God touched his heart on how to really bring that grace and love here today. Isn't that a beautiful thing? That's my father, Dr. Linkus. Yeah. <clears throat> so out of that, I want to say this. In Psalm 103, and this is things that I want you to feel that God has given you and also that he has made you to give to your family and to everybody you know, because we're in this thing together. Somebody say, I'm in it together. 
Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my inmost being. This is David talking, by the way. Praise his holy name. It says, praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Here's your benefit package. Forget not all of his benefit, your benefit package. Do not forget about your benefit package. When you're in that, you, we want the benefits. We need it. God knows that we need it. And I have five of them I'm going to deal with here out of this segment. It says, who forgives all your sins. What are the benefits that God gives you? And thank you, Jesus, because you can't get this done yourself. It takes a God to do this for you. He says, I mean, he forgives all your sins, all your sins. You're, you're like, well, yeah, he, may, he might, maybe he gets, gets to some of them, but I got a few I wonder if he has trouble with. No, he doesn't have trouble with those. God's got it all covered. He forgives all your sins. Somebody say all your sins. Because all your sins. That's what the, the blood of Jesus takes care of it all. His righteousness that he has and our belief system in that and what he did on that cross for us takes care of that. He, he forgives all your sins. All your sins. That's the first benefit. That's a pretty good one, isn't it? Now I'm going to deal with these on two two. Uh, wavelengths here. First of all, what God does for us and then what we can take for this and to be that for others. So as fathers and as, as mothers and as people in the household that are raising up people, it is important to understand this. Number one, this is how God is. This is how I want to be. It's how God leads. This is how I want to lead. This is how I want to do in my household. So I, there's nothing that anybody could do in my household that I do not forgive them for. I don't, I don't hold grudges. I don't hold things. I'm a pass-through kind of guy. The Lord has taught me over time to, to over, you know, and I, I've been able to bring that to my household that there is nothing here unforgiven. There is nothing here unforgiven that I'm holding on to, that I'm stressed out about all the time, that I'm going to lash out on you about. There is nothing unforgiven. I'm not good at everything. I have, I've, you know, I've been a good father, I believe. I, I, you know, you wake up on Father's Day and you're like, well, how did I do? You know what I'm saying? Well, to me, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of many, many things I did. There's things that I wish I would have done differently, things I could have done better. But I tell you what, the things that I know, I know from the Word of God. How many of you know that God taught, taught me how to forgive every situation? Many things against you. He's taught me how to do that. I'm pretty good at that one. And look at this. Look at number two. And He heals all of your diseases. He heals. How many of you know the Lord heals all your diseases? You know, diseases of the mind, diseases of the heart, diseases of the body. The Lord is your healer. Not only that, but he's called us. He's called the church to be healers in this culture, in this life right here, right now. We must be healers as well. We must care that somebody is hurting in their mind, in their emotions, in their heart, in their body. We must be people that go to them in faith and raise them up and say, you don't have to think like that. Your heart can be bound back up because Christ said he is the binder of the brokenhearted and he he, he, he brought me here. He brought me here to tell you about that. And whoever you get in contact with, you show up to be the, the solution of a situation. Because uh, first of all, your person is not, first of all, holding anything against them. You have no hurt in your heart about them. You've, you've let it go. Now you're ready to go ahead and get busy about what their needs are. Amen. I get busy. I get busy about this. He heal. I want to heal people's hearts, mind diseases, heart disease. Let's get up in this and get something done with it. I'm not, you know, God wants to use you in that way. Who redeems your life from the pit? Aren't you glad that God redeems your life from the pit? He God, he, re, he redeems your life from the pit. Now, now that is a big deal. That is a big deal, having your life redeemed from the pit. And, and you need to be, you got to realize it. And today I want to tell you, if you're in here, you're out there watching, listening on radio, watching on the internet. Listen, the Lord will redeem your life from the pit. You have to let him do it. You have to truly let him do it. Understand that he wants you out of whatever situation that you've gotten yourself into. Or whatever situation you were pushed into or born into. Maybe it's been a pit. I tell you what, the Lord is here to raise you up out of that thing. He's here to redeem your life from the pit. And not only that, he says, not only that, I'm not going to redeem your life from the pit. I am going to, I am going to, he says, I'm going to crown you with love and compassion. You know, it's, it's, it's just a way of thinking and doing that God has given us access to through the word of God. And I want to be a man like that. If I see somebody in a pit, if I see somebody in my family or in my friends of mine in a pit or a churchman in, the, in a pit, a place where they can't get out. You know, a pit is a place that you can't get out of yourself. 
You have to have somebody reaching to you and God will use you to help bring people out of a place of hurt, of unforgiveness, of situations, of, of, of circumstance that got them there. But you are a person that God has put on this earth to help them out. To help them out of there, to give them that hand, to bring them to the solid ground and to do exactly what God did. To crown them with love and compassion. To love them, right? You know what I'm saying? You know, the, the, the world would say, well, you get them, maybe, maybe, maybe you get them out of the pit. Maybe you get them out of the pit. But they're going to get a good scolding too. They're going to get a good scolding too. And they, no, man, that's not how God said to do it. That's not how God said to do it. He said, I'm going to get you out of the pit and eat right there. Knowing you've been in the pit, no matter what got you in the pit, I'm going to crown you with some love. I'm going to give you some compassion. Somebody say amen. I'm going to do that for you. That's how our God works. That's how I want to work. I want to work like he works. There's, there's, there's life in that. There's opportunity in that. You know, the word says this, and it's impacted me so much when I, when I got it over to my heart. The word says that the, God's kindness, God's kindness leads us to repentance or leads us to changing. God's kindness. Well, you know what? I, I've been wanting them to change. I've been trying to get them into them. They've got to change. Gotta. Well, I'd be kind to them. I don't even know God's way works. God's kindness leads us to repentance, not his judgment, not condemnation. He's not doing that. He's not a God that's doing that. He is a God who is kind, and that's what works. I'm just saying. The Word of God. The Word of God, it works. It works. I, I, you know, I know it's worked to my kids. I got two, two boys. They're, they're, they're men now. They're two boys. They're men now, but they, they have the biggest hearts in the world. They have the biggest hearts. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have asked for or prayed for or, or, or whatever. Mindy and I, uh, boy, you know, these, these boys that we raised who are now men, to have bigger hearts. I, they're, they're, the world couldn't take it if they did. It's just that big. And I'm so proud of that. Because I, I did that. That's, that's kind of the way I did. Kindness leads to change, to, to growth, to opportunity. Somebody with me? I'm not saying I did it all right, but I got some things right. You hear me? Crowns you with love and compassion. And then he, uh, the word says that he, dis he satisfies your desires with what? Good things. He satisfies your desires with good things. In this world where desire is... Usually not, you know, people talk about desire and it kind of goes to some place. And the desires that the world, the enemy would love you to, to latch on to and to take as your desires in life would, would, would take your life down. But the Lord says, I have something better for you. They're, those desires that you have, you're trying to fulfill them in all these different places, you know, sexually or, or uh, you know, power hungry or all about money. Somebody hear me? Uh, you're doing all of that, but I, I'm here to, to, to tell you that I want to I wanna give you the good things. I want to fulfill, I want to be somebody who helps people f fulfill their desires with what? Good things. God did it for us. We should do it for somebody. Somebody hear me today. Father's Day. Man, this is, this is a benefit package that God gives us. If God has given it to us, what, we, we, what, do, we, what do you do with that? Well, you take it. You say, Lord, I believe that you've given me this and, and I believe that I'm called to emulate you and live this life of love, as your word says. The word says, emulate God and live a life of love. What is this all about? What is this benefit package all about? Of, forg or of forgiving sins and healing and redeeming and crowning with love and compassion and satisfying desires with good things? That's because God loves us. We need to be men and women who love who love unconditionally, who love no matter what, who forgive no matter what. Is somebody with me? This is, this is what works. This is the way God said it works. Not condemning, not mean, not, not, not judgmental. Just love each other. And may it start with each of us, individually. Let it start with us. Let it start with New Life Space Coast. As we learn this, and you've learned this over the years, that this is how it works. This is what makes it better. Living like he lived, saying the things he did. You talk about, you know, love is patient, love is kind, does not envy and does not boast. 
you know, it, it, it's, it doesn't keep any record of wrongs, those, those lists of, of things. It, it, there, there, is no, there is no lack, there is no, no lack in love. Listen, God has called us to be people of the Word of God, understanding His gifts, His, His things that He has for our life. And I want to know them full well because only knowing them can I actually have them for myself and then truly love somebody else how I'm supposed to. You know, the, the word says this. When, when Jesus was asked, he was, he was asked, um, what, what is the most important thing? What is the most important command? What is the most important thing? And Jesus answered, to love the Lord your God with all, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. Love them as, as, you love, as, as you love yourself. How many of you know, if we're not really understanding God's love for us and don't have an understanding that we're supposed to love ourselves, not in some haughty way, but in a godly way, then I can truly love somebody else out of that. Until then, I'm not gonna love you properly. If I don't understand how much God loves me, forgives me, wants me, I'm not, and I, once I get that, I can truly say, well, God, if you love me, I'm, I can do that too. I can learn to do that. I can be the understanding of your love for me and my love that I need to have for myself so I can properly love you. So if God said that's the most important thing, I want to know about it. How about you? We're in this journey of love. We're in this journey of grace. I remember, I'll tell you one, one, one story about my, about my boys when they were really, really young. So we were on... Uh, we were on an island. We used to take the boat out and go to islands and things as they were growing up. Uh, still do when we have the chance. But uh, we were on this island and there's Mindy and I and Isaac and Elijah. And we were out there checking it out. And all of a sudden these little, these little crabs started rolling around. Little hermit crabs. So we're rolling around the island. And you know, all of a sudden we're looking at them and, and, and my, at the time my boys loved them and I'd, I had grown up with hermit crabs. I mean, I'd be in the back seat with a crab, I'd lose it, my mom would be like this on her hair, you know what I'm saying? I thought you lost your crab, you know. Well, how did I, <laughs> like crabs. On that island there was, there was this, there was this, um, all these crabs. But this one particular crab was just like, a massive, overgrown hermit crab, about the size of my hand, looked like this. And he had this shell of all that he was living in, it was a lot like this. And uh, that, that shell didn't fit, this, didn't fit this crab anymore because he had grown, outgrown this shell. And, and we, 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 see, we, we see this crab coming up and he's just so huge and ugly. And he, he, he's, he's walking into this thing and my boys come up and they're like, they're like, Dad, that, 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 crab, that crab needs a new shell. And so they started finding different shells, some bigger shells that were more fit this gigantic crab. Started putting it around him. We were all hoping he would just find his way and go right in it. Would you go get in that bigger shell? There's better things there. There's more things there. It's, it's, a, it's a better way to live. This looks uncomfortable. There's something bigger and better for you. And at that early age, I just saw their hearts just going, this, guy, this isn't right. It reminds me of the story of Abraham. It was Abraham the father. It reminds me of the story of uh, uh, we were hoping he would go into that bigger shell because we knew there was more opportunity in that shell. Abraham was inside, the word says, when he started giving him the promise about being father of many nations. And he was inside in, this, in his own place that he had built with his own hands. And, 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 and the Lord called him outside. He said, get out of there for a minute. I want to show you the real. I want to show you the real. Aren't you glad God shows you the real? He said, I want to show you the real. And he said, look up in the sky. You've been in that place too long. You put that roof over your head and that, that, those four walls are closing you in. Come outside. I want you to look up. This is, the kind of, this is the kind of promise I want to give you. I want you to count the stars if you can count them. Obviously you couldn't. There are thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of stars. And he, he couldn't even count them. But he said, that's how your offspring is going to be. That's, what you're, that's the promise I have for you. But you have to get outside of the shell. You gotta get outside of the wall. Somebody with me today. So your vision can really be what God's vision is for you in your life, in your family, in your friends, with your friends, in your own personal walk with God. So let's go ahead and get out that shell. Let's get out that wall and see what God really wants us to see. Somebody say amen. God bless you guys. I love you.